I can't grab dirt from outside because it's probably filled with like rat shit. So I can't do that. I mean, I have a cat that should. I, I like take it out too. I'm like, I don't want your like cat poo contaminating my like beautiful life. garden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kevin just put down pavers too, so it's like there's less dirt exposed. So it's like yeah, pavers I just and stuff. Like a, a I don't know if it was like legit dirt. I mean, <laughs> she's like vegan. She's not going to have fake dirt. Come on. <laughs> Mask dirt is real dirt. <laughs> But, like, real organic dirt from outside. Ooh, Andrea, I got this chai tea thing that's, like, That's soy. what I'm drinking. That's what I'm drinking. The thing that comes in the bottle thing? Well, I buy it in, like, it comes in, like, a carton, and then I just mix it with the milk, and it's, like, uh, instant chai, and it's delicious. Well, I have, like, a pre-made chai with soy thing upstairs. I, I got it to mix with my coffee, but it's really good. Yeah, I just buy, like, uh, a container. It kind of just looks like a container of milk, and then I'm su you're supposed to drink it within, like, a week of opening it, but... I will take my time with it, and I haven't gotten sick yet. It, it's soy. That's not going to go bad. No, but the, the chai mix doesn't even have milk in it. It's just, I'm I don't know. Fine. It's like water and spices. And Your super strong organic body will deal with whatever happens. Yeah, my body that, oh, gosh, we're live. We've been live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that I saw that, though, because I was just about to make a comment. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I was trying to, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was like, guys, we're live. Christina, <laughs> you're coming. Just because you got the devil uh, horns in you. I'm sure, I'm, sure you know, I'm sure you know exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> now the line of conversation was definitely going somewhere. <laughs> There's supposed to be whiskey in this. Hold on. I regret nothing. <laughs> Okay, well, you know that today, Also, I'm just going to throw that out there. That, it made me really angry. I was at work, and I was sitting at a table with, like, all my male coworkers, and they were like, hey, want to get a drink after work? And I'm like, oh, I can't. Um, you know, it, it, it's time for my monthly, and before I could say, like, book club, one of the guys is like, visitor? No. What? Yeah, that was, my, that was my reaction, too. I was like, what? Rude. Also, my lamp looks so cool. It does look cool. Yeah. It looks like a UFO, but like in the coolest way. Well, if you look at it, it's actually different sections of plastic that I puzzle together, so it's like a weird 3D thing. Also, this is Fireball whiskey, so. Yeah, Fireball whiskey and water, just to keep you even. <laughs> yeah, let's, I'm going to say hello now. <laughs> Go for it. Let's do this. Hello, Internet. I wish I had, like, fire hands, like... Okay. Oh, I just shared oh, something funny, too. How are you? This randomness is Only Lovers Left in the Library, and we're a book club, and we read romance with vaginal fantasy, uh, except this month we didn't read romance. Yeah, it wasn't at all. It was actually a romance. It was a bromance. Western adventure. If you love Westerns, this, no, I wasn't. It wasn't a romance. So uh, what we read was Silver on the Road by Laura Ann Gilman. Right? Did I say her name right? Sure. And uh, we're all dressed up this way because I think we're trying to be characters in the story or relate in some way. So I put on my my devil horns because the devil uh, is, is a character in the story. And I wanted to go with, like, gambling devil, throwing cards and giving people looks and stuff. Although the devil in the book is a guy, but... Whatever. It's you also a TV. You know? Both genders. Who cares? <laughs> what, did you guys, what did you guys put on for the for the theme? Um. So for basically all of the book except for like a chapter or two, they're out on the trail, riding horses. You know, exploring the land. So um, this is pretty much how I would look if I was. <laughs> around all day. I, yeah, I've done it before. This is, this is pretty much exactly how it would look. I would have probably tried to make my bandana and my shirt match a little more, but, you know, and uh, got some dirt on me because we can't, yeah, we can't, we can't shower on the road. There's no water sources readily available, so, um, yeah. And it, is, and it is real dirt, contrary to what my friend the devil here might think. <laughs> <laughs> Devil spreading lies. I'm drinking chai tea. Um, they drink 
Well, do they drink more coffee? Coffee. They have a lot of coffee. All right, they drink coffee. coffee, but I'm not a coffee drinker, so I'm drinking tea, and I'm drinking chai tea because that's the only tea that I like. Delicious. A green mason jar, which I probably would not drink on the table. It kind of goes with the look. Yeah. So. <laughs> I approve. So, in the span of you guys explaining what your looks are, I found a lot of creepy but symbolic stuff. <laughs> Random shit that's in your just room. Random that shit. Just so happens to go with the theme of the I book. Know, I know. <laughs> All right, internet. I collect some weird shit. I don't know why. It's just stuff that I've collected. So I have a bandana to go with the theme. Um, I have a framed feather that was given oh, to me as a gift. A feather in her hair in the book at one so point. So I have a framed feather. I also cut off. A lot of my hair a long time ago, and I kept part of it in a braid. <laughs> <laughs> so I have an extra braid that could be part of whatever. <clears throat> I'm going to put that away because that one's creepy. <laughs> um, I have a painted skull because the devil, and they do witchcraft. They do magic. There's, like, magic that happens. There's magic. There's magic. I have a couple of other skulls, including a bear and a rat. but a knife. That might be too much for yeah, the knife is the best. weak hearted. Oh, and my axe is too far away because I also have an axe, but my hunting knife, which is made from antler bone, that I'm sure was found in a nice way. I'm sure the <laughs> I'm gonna, it was on the road already. And <laughs> it was already dead. It was, it was, very, very, it was collected appropriately. No, anyway, so we read Silver on the Road. And <laughs> <laughs> no, but look at the case. The case is like this really nice leather. Leather. <laughs> we read leather. Silver on the Road. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chip in my craw from when I ate. Too many anyway. chips. <laughs> and I'm having water and flask. <laughs> and okay, so I'm going to read the description that's on Goodreads <laughs> of the book, and then uh, we'll uh, share our thoughts on this not romance. Okay, so Silver on the Road. Bromance, bromance, they're friends. It was a bromance. It was a friend, a platonic, bro, a platonic romance. Yes. Okay. Um, so, a heroic fantasy by award-winning author and, about a young woman who is trained in the art of the sinister hand of magic, but at what price? On her 16th birthday, Isabel makes a choice to work for the devil in his territory west of the Mississippi. But this is not the devil you know. This is a being who deals fairly with immense, but not unlimited power, who offers opportunity to people who want to make a deal and make sure that they always get what they deserve. Uh, but his land is a Wild West that needs a human touch, and that's where Izzy comes in. Inadvertently trained by him to see the clues in and manipulations of human desire, Izzy is raised to be his left hand and travel the cir circuitous road <laughs> through the territory. As we all know, where there is magic, there is power and chaos and death. <laughs> yeah, I like higher, I don't know. Like this book sounds amazing. But it really wasn't. <laughs> that book sounded amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> so, um, who wants to go first? Give me like your thoughts. Like overall, what did you think of the story? And then I have some questions for you about the book, about what actually happened, and you know, because I need to, I need to vent about the story. So. Who do you want to go first? Well, actually, I'm gonna make Tishai go first. <laughs> I'm like reading right now. <laughs> Stop it. Just tell me what you think so far. What okay. you read. So you only I, like 5% of it. I got to 94% of the book. I'm Thanks. sorry, internet. A lot of really bad stuff happened this month, which is why we had to <laughs> post it. Yeah, yeah, we were supposed it. to do it last week, and then there was like... This super cool apartment of... room. This super cool room. My ceiling collapsed, and there was water everywhere. And just chaos and mayhem. <laughs> My, I was apparently getting my comeuppance for something bad I did in a past life. I don't know. All right, so the book. Um, I was very excited because I liked the last Western-style book that we read, and I'm always down for a young protagonist who's leaving for the first time and trying to strike out on her own in a adventure story where she finds herself. Um, 
Isabel's like, uh, all right. I expected more from the story. I didn't. I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a romance for the first half of the book because Isabel's like 16 and everyone else seems to be in their like late 30s or 40s, which. I mean, I guess back then wouldn't have been such a big deal. Nowadays, that you know, I mean, it still happens, but that, that shit's gross. Um, <laughs> so as I was reading it, I was like, well, maybe she's like super mature, but then she wasn't. So then I was really hopeful that it wouldn't become a romance. And then Christine and Andrea both confirmed that there's no <laughs> romance in it, and I was like, praise be, because that would have been really uncomfortable. Yeah, that would have been that would have been very awkward. Yeah. Like, whenever he put his hand on her back or something, I was like... <laughs> Please don't! <laughs> like, oh, I that's asked, when it happens! I it's... asked Christina, too. Like, I started reading, and after, like, one chapter or two, I was like, Chris, tell me, though. Like, <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, it's not. I was just Again, like... It is a romance, but it's a platonic romance. It's like a... We'll talk about them. She loves herself! She loves the land! Maybe she loves the devil later on. Who knows? The devil's ageless. But, um, but, yeah, I expected more from it. There was, like, potential for so much more to happen, and I kept pushing through, waiting for more action to happen, and then when it did, I feel like every time something big happened, she kind of just, like, passed out, and then <laughs> <laughs> woke up, and things were okay. And I was like, what did... Like, did you sleep fight? Is someone going to tell you what happened? Like, what's going on? And then Gabriel was all dramatic and super intense figure, and I was like, ooh, what's going on with him? What's his super dark secret? And it's like, oh, he can't leave. Word. Okay. Uh, you basically <laughs> signed a lease that you can't get out of. That's what your soul That's what your soul is, is a lease you can't break, because then you don't get your security deposit back. I'm like, dude, what the hell? And then there's, like, a magician, which... Cool. He was cool, but I, I didn't like that they kept calling him a magician. I feel like with the vibe of the story, there should have been a different name for him. Like, a soul eater or something a lot more like ooh, but instead it's like magic illusions, and he's like. Yeah, I think that they just didn't consider his magic to be, to be medicine magic, to be like legit magic, you know. Because legit magic is called medicine in the book, and I was like, all right, yeah, well, we exactly. And that I did make that observation how legit magic is called medicine, like it's all it's almost scientific. It's more real. Yeah, and what he's doing, he's just... Illusion! Messing with the wind. Messing with the wind. He's not doing magic at all. Yeah, he's just like, woo! And then I guess he's like a Highlander, because there can only be... It's not that there can only be one, but you have to, like, kill the other magicians to get power and that... Whatever. I thought the book was going to be better. I didn't dislike Isabel, but she could have been more interesting. It took her a very long time to finally be like... I'm the devil's left hand. Fear me. Whereas, like, by chapter two, I'd have been like, fuck y'all, I work for the devil. What are you doing? What? What? <laughs> Give me answers. Look at my hand. There's a sigil on it. <laughs> and that's that's my opinion. Oh, we should have drawn something on our hand. Oh. Um, good ah! <laughs> God, we always forget something. I mean, I have a stick and poke tattoo, so just pretend that shit's on my my hand. <laughs> okay. What about you, Andrea? Yeah. What did you think? What did you think of the story? What was your um, impression? Yeah, I mean, I, I I kind of agree with Tashai. I just think like there was all of this like secrecy involved with all the characters and all these things, but then I felt like when things were revealed, like I thought that the big reveals or the big events or the big explanations in the book were just not that exciting, like, I don't know, like, I, I really wanted, you know, Gabriel, the, that was his name, right? Yeah, her mentor? Yeah, I really wanted him to have done, like, some, like, dark, like, thing in his past that, like, he now needed to, like, exchange with the devil, like, I don't know, and then we, like, find out what it is, and I'm like, oh, well, well we find out what it is without an explanation, really, because I still never found out, like, why, but anyway, it was just, like, it was not, like, this huge thing. And then with her, it's, like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's kind of the dick move for the devil to, like, make us, and, and for the author, to make us get through, like, this whole book to find out that her purpose as the devil's hand is to, like, eradicate these, like, weird, like, underground creatures or whatever. Like, 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, the whole book is like, let me let you find out for yourself. But it's not a very, like... Convincing. Yeah, it's not, like, convincing. It's not, like, super enlightening. Like, I don't think I... I don't feel like I learned something by learning it on my own. <laughs> um, I don't think she did necessarily. And I don't know. It's just very meh. Like, I'm definitely going to forget this book. That sounds awful, but... Like, I'm definitely going to forget this book. It's not it's not a memorable book. And I feel like it could have been. Like, I think the idea of it was so cool with, like, the devil ruling his territories and being this, like, cool figure who does deals and, like, all of these random, like, little territories and exploring the land and this, like, crazy magician. Like, I feel like it had all the, like, it was, like, a great recipe. It just was a very, like... <laughs> Spongy, flavorless cake. <laughs> flavorless cake of a book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ow, I hit my horn. Ow. <laughs> no. It was my first night, you know. So, oh, whatever. Damn the devil! Damn the Sorry, devil to hate! Is to add? So my turn to say how my feelings? Go. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, I made my computer brighter, and now I can see my face. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I had the same, I had this, I had a, you know, when you read a description, I don't know what, I, why I even bother reading a description, because then what it does is that it it's builds me up. Like the last book. You like the last book, like it just built me up, and <laughs> what I ended up reading wasn't what was promised, and yeah. I agree that all of the elements were there. It's like a dating um, profile, babe, you can't, mm, great I stuff. love the, <laughs> it's like a dating profile. <laughs> yeah, this is the Tinder. B book descriptions are like Tinder profiles. Like, well, no, it certainly it got me excited uh, though, and and I felt like it was unfair, and that the that there could have been a better balance. Now, I love Western stories, and I love weird Western, and the way that it was presented with the you know her being the devil's hand and her going out into the frontier with her mentor, and, and you know being his instrument because that's what she was. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. At least not enough for me. The, mm -hmm. I understand that there's going to be some kind of meandering in the, you know, because they're out on the on the trail. She's learning her way. She's going to have to stumble every now and then, but it it fell under this like for me if it became very clear once I got halfway through the book that Isabel was going to just be useless. Just she's going to have this power and just never she's upset it. that she's just an instrument, but then nothing comes of that. And we meet like these really cool characters. We meet these like we meet Gabriel who is not like a perfect mentor, but he, I liked how much he respected their relationship mm -hmm. and I like how not harmful he was to her. I was really scared. And then, you know, that it was going to be weird. But it wasn't. And so I wanted him to, you know, he did teach her, but a lot of the things that were happening, I felt like were off camera. A lot of the things that she was learning, I expected because they were going to be on the on the road, except for very faint supernatural stuff. When, or when they meet the, the indigenous people, you know, not a lot comes from that. He knows certain languages. They meet this other really super powerful guy that he's giving letters to, Graciendo. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he's there yeah. for a scene, and I'm like, who was that? It's all no, they made, they made such a big deal out of him. Like, they, they uh, really he was led up to the scene, and that pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> I said, that was it? I couldn't believe it. I was so angry. They don't even. She doesn't even talk to him. And then there's just an offhanded comment of, "Did I just meet an animal spirit in human form?" Oh, well, okay. Like, oh, yeah. He thought I was really funny, and like he didn't kill me, so now we're like sort of frenemies. <laughs> and um, what else? I, I I think what saved the book for me was the magician and the the chaos that he brought because I found that. I found that there there was just not enough story there when they when they uh, encounter the monster you know that monster that's like eating people or creating this kind of like plague like environment you know he's causing a lot of destruction I didn't feel scared for them at all at, at all too. I didn't feel like anything bad was going to happen and I agree that most of what she did you know she channeled through uh, the devil and uh, the devil or the old man as they call him mm. and uh, 
because it's not even sure if he is actually the devil. He's just kind of, they call him that. And uh, I thought, I just wanted, ugh, I always say this, but I wanted more. I I wanted more. I've read westerns before, and I there's always got to be something that that's there aside from the frontier to make the story interesting. And I feel like when it got to the action, it, it didn't deliver what was promised. And it didn't deliver enough magic. The setting alone felt beautiful, but that wasn't enough for me to forgive the pace. And that's what I wanted to ask you guys. How did you feel the pace? Like, did the pace work for you? Because I felt, as I was reading it, you know when you're driving and then you forget, you don't forget you're driving, but then you get home and you don't realize, like, oh, damn, I'm home. Mm-hmm. And self-hypnotize. Like every day. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I felt as I was reading. I was like, well, something must have happened. I've read, like, 40 pages. And nothing. And nothing has happened. And I'd go back and I'm like, oh, this... And that's not to say that the, the, the actual writing was beautiful. Her sentences are, like, beautifully crafted. But I needed more action in order to stay with it. And I didn't have that. Or, or at least if not, if not more action, because I, you know, I, I, I'm totally fine with reading, like, very slow books. Like, I've definitely read books where literally nothing happens. But then those books have, like, really, really great character development. And I feel like this book, like, yes, we get to know the characters a little bit better. You know, we get to know their backstories a little bit better. But, like, for me, it wasn't just that we didn't have enough action. I just, I was not happy with, like, the character. Like, I feel like, I know she, like, grows and she, like, changes throughout the book, but I don't think she, like, grows or changes enough. And, and I don't think, like, I don't know. I just I just wanted more out of the characters too. Like I wasn't really satisfied with the characters either. Like you said, like when when your favorite character is a character that's really very like tertiary to the story and kind of just like pops in and out and it's not like that really says a lot cuz really your favorite should be one of the main characters. <laughs> I guess or at least that it evokes yep. a reaction from you, you know? Cuz even though I mean, your main character could be just whatever, but you have some sort of reaction to their story, you know, when you're reading a, a story, like, let's say the, the character's like a killer, you know, and, um, I don't know, it just didn't have, you know what it didn't have also, it didn't have any bite to it, it didn't have any, like, bite to it, it didn't have any, I never felt like they were going to starve or die, I never felt like they were in danger, there was no, um, there was no drama, it was just traveling, and I guess that's fine, but... They made such a fuss about the Devil's West, and, and they made such a big fuss. I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel like they were ever in any real danger. And also the main antagonist was just super not present. It was just a very passive conflict that they were just sort of riding towards, and it didn't really happen. I was super unhappy with that one scene where she like finally confronts like this like beaver monster. Beaver yeah. monster. Did you get to read what happens with the with the guy? No, I saw that it like murdered the friars, and then. No. So when so when she finally confronts it, it it's basically like the most. It, it's like the easiest, most passive thing ever. She ba- basically she stands up and says, "Hey, I'm the devil's hand. You know, go do your own thing underground, and we won't have any problems." And then the beaver's like. KK and like goes well because she realizes that once he entered, once it entered the devil's territory, it was part of the territory, and so she couldn't just do away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, she has a conversation and says like, "You do your <laughs> thing, I'll do my thing. We'll like coexist. Is that cool?" And the beaver's like, "Yeah, I, all right, I guess that's cool." And then that is that. Like this whole. But I thought- that they've been like leading up to and then she's like alright now I need to find the other beaver monster things and like have the same conversation with them and like basically that's where the book ends at is just like them going to find like other beaver monster people or whatever like it's <laughs> but I thought the beaver monster was like super hungry I mean you yeah. telling me hey go chill out underground isn't going to stop me from being like yeah but like where's my Crunchwrap Supreme like I'm still hungry <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are my snacks? Like, what am I supposed to eat? There's no souls underground. For Just real, though, I could eat a crunch wrap right now. I could yeah. totally yeah. have a crunch wrap for free right now. <laughs> I have not had Taco Bell in so long. God, this is Taco Bell right by work. I should go more often. But my health. Taco Bell, like, 
Okay, Actually, so... there's a checkers near me. You know no, I had some drunk no. checkers last week. No. Don't do it. I did it last weekend, girl. All right, so my question. Um, what, how did, what did you think of the main character, then, Isabel? Mm -hmm. And, like, what do you look for... What do you look for in... A, this is a coming-of-age story, right? So what do you look for in a coming-of-age story, and did, like, Isabel meet those expectations for you at all as a, as a protagonist? Who, am I going first? Sure. Um, no, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I always feel like in a, in a really good, or really in, in any good story that's, like, character-driven, like this one theoretically is, because it's, like, coming of age or whatever, um, I, I really just need to be able to, like, empathize with whatever the character is going through and I want them to be able to get through that change and like come out a better and stronger person or whatever like I'm right there with them and with her I really wasn't um, for two reasons one I just like I said I just really didn't care about her like if she had died and magician guy had saved the world I would have been fine with that too <laughs> <laughs> but also I just like I said before I just really don't think she went through that big of a change like she, like, at the beginning of the story, she's like, mm, this is my life. Do I want to keep my life or not? All right, I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to say, let's embrace this, like, That's new... That's what I was going to say. For the amount of mulling this idea over that she did in that first chapter, she went all day, and then she she said what she wanted to say, and she says, I want to be, your, I want to be out there doing your work, and he's like, okay. Uh, and then she actually goes there. That's what she wants. And, yeah, she gets what she wants, but not in the way that she expected, but showed absolutely no kind of amb I have a huge problem with characters like this, where there's just no ambition at all. Like, where was that Isabel? That it only happened in certain times when she'd be really sassy or... That's what or I'm saying. would be it's talking like, for her. Like, for the most part, she was... It, it was just... They really... First of all, there really wasn't any change. Like, she seemed the exact same, like, passive person in the beginning where she was like, ah, oh, this is my life, blah, blah, blah. And then second of all, like, honestly, I don't think she did anything more, like, thrilling or, like, character-defying than when she told the devil, you know what? I'm going to sign this paper. I don't even know what it means, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign my life away. Like, that was the riskiest thing she really did all, all, all throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And it happened in the very beginning. Like, after that, I didn't see any, like, huge change or anything. She was just, like, she was coming to terms with what her job meant and, and how she had to, like, what she had to do in order to fulfill those responsibilities. But I'm very also frustrated for her. The same way that I feel frustrated when a story doesn't tell me anything, mm -hmm. I felt frustrated that she was so lost. And I I didn't buy this whole fucking bullshit that the devil was training her to learn the things that she needed to know, like, passively somehow, because I didn't see her doing that. I'm pretty I'm sure the devil just got distracted, and then he was just like, oh, shit. I forgot to do that. What do you think, Deshai? Did this, like, what do you think about her? And did this fit your coming-of-age ideal? No. <laughs> it did not. No, my, my coming-of-age ideal is, like, you have a character who experiences a lot of self-doubt about where they are in their life and really what, what they're going to become. And then they either come up with, they come across a challenge that's a very obvious thing that they're going to have to deal with, and they deal with it, and then they grow. Or they try to live their lives normally, and things happen around them that they are then also involved in, and then they indirectly end up growing and learn like a lesson from it. She was like, I want to do this thing. And then she started <laughs> doing this thing, and then there wasn't really a lot to do. And then whenever, <laughs> whenever the challenge actually came up where it's like, Oh my god, Isabel, you're the devil's hand. Use your hand magic. Like, figure out what's happening here. Oh, there's all these dead bodies. And like, oh, all these people are sick. And like, oh my god, what's ha happening over here? She's just like, oh, is it me? Is it the devil working through me? What does it mean? I'm just Izzy, or am I not? River Dream. River Dream, what does it mean? 
<laughs> I'm going to squeeze my fingers because I feel the symbol on my hand. I really would have loved to know more about those snakes. I'm just going to throw it out there. Like, yeah, that was yeah. Super cool. That was another thing that I happened. Wanted and I, was like, I wanted to know more about the snakes. I wanted to know more about that, like, bear man. <laughs> I wanted to know more about the one other cowgirl person she meets who's, yeah. like, got her shit together and is super, like, Hey, yeah, you gotta face your challenges, but here's some powder. You put that shit in your hair; it'll keep them nice and soaked up. Yeah, but you gotta pants. like get some pants. Isabel never gets fucking pants. Never gets pants. <laughs> For real, that was, a, that that was the biggest failure thing. of the book that she never got pants, and she she was like, ah, I'm not gonna wear pants, and then she's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna wear pants, but it never happens. And, you know what else is this and I felt like she was having she had hot thighs. We had we had. And I'm like, was she riding side saddle, or did she like hike up her skirt? Yeah, she had like, her. She had, had the buttons in the, the back. Buttons in the back. Oh, okay, gotcha. But then she um, had to put them back up every time. Put them back up every time. You know what I just realized? You know what I just realized? Oh gosh, suddenly a hair and echo. Um, you know when the snakes were like, "Beware your friends who are your enemies, and your enemies who are your friends," or whatever. Like, I was talking about the otter monster, wasn't it? I don't know. I just realized that I, I didn't even know. I was like, oh, wait, who were they talking about? Because they never really told us. <laughs> a lot of unanswered questions. Does she... A lot of unanswered questions. Because I get the, like, your enemies are your friends, because, like, the magician and her maiden alliance, she got along with that one friar, and then that one monster was like... And then she's like, no, we're fine. Yeah. Do you guys think fine. That, I think that would... would I think that what would have saved this book is if Gabriel had been presented as the main character. Like, I feel like he had a bigger personality, bigger story to tell. Or, and then he should have been the, the focus should have been squarely on him. And out of her fucking mind for as long, I didn't like being in her chapters. I was like irritated all the time with her. I was like, quit being stupid. She's 16, fine, I get it. But I'm also not into this like learning figuring shit out when you like legitimately have no ambition and no just like <laughs> also like she's just a boring 16 year old she wasn't even like a hormonally driven 16 year old who was like oh my god what am I gonna do like it was it, she was just Look, I'm 16, I'm gonna, but I'm, I'm also very boring out there. if I was on the trail with sexy Gabriel man like, I would have at least had, like, a moment or two. Don't you act so surprised, Christina? You know about Cowboy Man. Yeah, but she was... Mm, you're yeah, right. Yeah, Cowboy Man in the woods. I've, li yeah. you know, I've literally had this exact experience, and I was... <laughs> <laughs> my point is... And Jay would be like, oh, no, my bread has come loose. <laughs> Because I was picturing him like Jeff Bridges in True Grit. You need to stop picturing everyone like Jeff Bridges. Not, he's not, not that old. He's not that old. I know old. he's not that old, but no. I was telling this on the chat. Yeah, I, well, I was saying in the chat yesterday. I'm I said, well, he might as well have been. Cowboys make the age rules non existent. Yeah. You know, especially when they're looking after everything. Why don't you go down this road? I'm the one wearing the oh. devil horns. I don't want to go down this fucking road. <laughs> What if you cast Gabriel as, like, what's-his-face from Lord of the Rings? Um, the one knight. The one, the, like, heir. What's-his-face? Aragorn? Yeah. That guy. Or the other one who's, like, in every other fantasy movie and dies. <laughs> oh, you know Sean Bean? Mean. Yeah. Maybe, like, oh, a scraggly Sean I like Bean. him as Jeff Bridges. I really do. I like him as Jeff Bridges. Hey, it doesn't see. matter. If he was Jeff Bridges, I'd still, like, have yeah. sex. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we could do it. <laughs> would still play. Don't be a do it. Who am I kidding? Well, anyway, but I just, I, you know, that's but that's how disparate I saw them. Yeah. Like, she was just a kid, and he was a grown-ass man, and that's why I, I, I feared for her, and then once I felt comfortable, I was like, okay. Could, well, honestly, what I thought originally was going to happen is just that they were going to have this really nice friendship, and then eventually she was going to, like, turn 18, <laughs> and then it was going to be like, hey, hey. We should get hitched. Yeah, but no, that's not what happened. Okay, what I wanted to ask you guys about the devil and his bargain, do you think that there is such a thing as a bad bargain? Based on, like, how he makes deals with people. And, like, what did you think of the devil's character? 
Um, I think I think they portrayed him as like really fair because, like, I think how you see how you see like devil's bargains like in movies and stuff. It's always like, I will take your entire soul in exchange for like two dollars or like this orange you want or like it's always like, like, super <laughs> unfair. <laughs> well, I could really go for an orange right now. I'm just saying. No, my soul it's, always, the devil. <laughs> it's always just like very. Un, it's a very uneven match. But like in this book, they portray it as like, hey, this is something that you really, really want, and this is what the devil considers to be like a fair or equal, you know, item of value. And like if like if you look at, for example, the one. I don't know, like, it, it, Gabriel, you know, doesn't have to do anything, like, insane to get what he wants. He ends up doing something that he had already volunteered to do anyways, like, but, but that it, the devil finds really helpful to him or whatever. Like, I just feel like his, his bargains, I mean, we don't really see or read what his bargains are with, like, other people, but it, it kind of struck me more as, like, he was a businessman, and if he made unfair you know, business transactions, and people would stop coming to him. And the reason people keep coming to him is because they're like fair bargains. That's that's how I saw it. So I think so too. I didn't get why people were rejecting him and thought scared about him. him because people are scared of anything they don't understand. But I feel like he was like such a facilitator, you know, and his character. I'm like, this guy is like the only person who. Yeah, He's like, oh, everybody gets what they deserve. At the same and time, though, at the same time, though, you know, when they describe, you know, the cities far away or whatever, it does seem like the devil's what, like, he keeps them behind on, like, civilization or, like, you know, modern inventions don't really make their way there. So I can also see people being like, oh, look at that backwards country where, like, they don't embrace modernity or they don't embrace, you know, so, like, I... I could see how people would be like, mm, I don't know about that devil place, you know. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. That's how we are. Because that's how we are with like, you know, the few indigenous tribes or whatever that are still out there. You know, we're like, mm, like that seems like cool living, but I don't know about all of them like voodoo and stuff they do. Yeah, they also called him the old man, and I remembered. I looked it up. I looked it up in my like native. I couldn't find anything about it, but I remember the old man being like a. It's like a trickster. And, the, you know, the devil was there since the beginning, before anybody else was there, well, when the tribes were there. And they didn't have, they didn't have, like, a, like a, they had a weird relationship. They respected him and the power that he had, but he, you know, they didn't like him. And I want, I want to know more about how that came to be. And, and what was the devil's end game? I guess we'll have to read the second part. I think there's like, going to be a second part. Really? I am not reading the second part. I never read the second part to these things. You know that's that. surprising. I'm just saying. Um, you no, know, there's a lot of stuff set up here. I want to know. I'll, I'll probably read it. I'll, I'll read it begrudgingly. I'll be like, "Tell me all." But no, I was not. I was not satisfied, and I'm going to try. And then I will like it. But that if that doesn't do it for me, then I'm going to be like, "Never." Just stars. Something like. Well, I gotta do this often. Um, to add to Andrea's point, uh, I think his deals were fair because if he were unfair, she wouldn't have been freed as soon as she turned eighteen. As soon as she turned sixteen, mm -hmm. she was only in. She like was only indentured to him through her parents' deal until she was sixteen. Once she was an adult, you're free to go. You're free to do what you want to do. And then she chose to stay there. They almost made it seem like he had orchestrated it so that she would ask him to be the left hand. I mean, he <laughs> gave her... No, I didn't I didn't see it as, like, he tried to make it happen. Um, I'm sure he wanted her to stick around because, like, he's not going to want her to go. They seemed to get along well enough, and she was a good worker, and she, like, had her shit together. But well, He had trained her. Yeah, yeah, but I feel like he trains everyone who gets brought into his inner circle to be able to, like, read people and do all that stuff. Maybe she just was better at it, picked it up more quickly, and that's when the idea of, like, oh, maybe she should be my left hand came up. But before that, she could have been like, all right, word, peace out, I'm going to go. And he would have been like, okay, bye. 
See, fares are well. Done. What do you think she should have done? I, me, Isabel, if I wasn't sure of what, what I was going to do, you know how, like, you want to see the world before you, like, settle down in a place? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's why didn't she just, like, take a road trip and then, like, see everything that there was? I would have requested a rumspringa. Can I get one <laughs> here where I go out and do whatever I want and then I can come back, maybe? Rumspringa! Yeah. However, to counterpoint that, to play devil's advocate, um... <laughs> I feel like, as Andrea was explaining, that she she uh, she sees how people wouldn't have necessarily been super excited to live in this backwards area where everything else has modern technology. With modern technology comes your loss of faith, because through science and education, you have knowledge, and knowledge is kind of the counterpoint to faith. You don't need faith as much when you have science and medicine and all that stuff. So... The same way that, like, gods need faith, the devil needs people to believe in him because that, honestly, probably is what gives him his, his power, his control. He can only control people on his territory so much as they, like, believe in him and come to him for these deals. So, like, that's one reason why maybe he keeps things so simple and so in this opposite of modern world environment and, and, and all that cowboy stuff because why would you need the devil to help make a deal when you like have an iPad and why <laughs> then like and then or that's crunch another supreme. Yeah. yeah and then like or crunch wrap supreme crunch wrap supreme and then also that also might be like why he says you know I don't think he ever says it but it's kind of implied if she left she wouldn't necessarily have been able to kind of come back because once you get a taste of the real world and you see what's out there and it's like, oh, I can find things to fill in this hole that the territory would have left. You can wear pants. Yeah, I can wear pants and not necessarily have to be a cowgirl. Why should I have to bother coming back? And that's why like people like Gabriel exist who are bound to the territory because if okay, certain yeah. people okay. are then allowed to leave, what do you do? I guess, but I mean, if she knew all about the world, then she could, that would have made her a better left hand, I feel. Mm, I don't know. Well, I feel like it would, it would have affected her ability to make decisions that were she best would have for the territory. Useless. Just useless. Do you feel like she handled mm. being the left hand well? Do you feel like she should have been better about it? Yes. <laughs> I feel like she should have experimented more. Ooh, weird things happen when I touch the dirt. Yeah, right? Wouldn't you, like... Well, and I, I just feel like it. the whole book, like, she's, like, trying to figure out, like, what she's supposed to do. But, like, even when she realizes she can do certain things, she... I don't know, like, anytime something comes up, she's like, Devil, tell me what to do. Devil, help me again. Like, she doesn't even realize... Hey, yo. Like the staples button? Wait, so like wait. Like it, it, it took her a really long time to realize that like she could do something without like calling for the devil or whatever. And But even if, I mean, he was upset that he would talk through her it, or, or like, you know, use his power, channel his power through her. And I, I would have been, I mean, I, get, I mean, if I'm just starting out, I would have been totally okay with that. Because I would have been like, Jesus, take the wheel. Satan, wheel. No, not Satan. Old man, take the wheel and like take show me how to fucking do this. <laughs> yeah, he was he was her like training wheels until she like, uh, and then eventually she looks and he's not holding the bike anymore. And it's like, oh my god, I mean, oh my, oh man. I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like she should have been more down with it, or he should. It should have been a harder push. It should have been like he could have made something to really test her. Being mm -hmm. the devil and all, Jesus. Yeah, God. <laughs> he could have done worse than been like, "Here, I'm shipping you off. Here's some snacks for the road." And then she opens the bag, and it's not double stuffed Oreos; it's single stuff. Like that's the kind of challenge. The vanilla kind, you know? Uh, uh, what is this? <laughs> you send me off into the wilderness with one packet of Oreo cakesters? All the cream taken out. Get it? No double cream, no single cream. No cream at all. That's devilish. <laughs> just crackers. No just cookie. <laughs> just that shit. Off-brand Oreo cookie. 
It's Oreo spelled with two E's. Like, what is this? <laughs> All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys the last thing, like, and then whatever, we can wrap it up. So, um, how do you think, or what would you do if you were, like, the devil's hand? Like, what would you, what would be your, if you could do whatever, and you're suddenly the devil's left hand, what would you do? <laughs> no one put any thought into this. I was thinking of, I was I made a detailed plan of what I do. <laughs> of course you did. Did you use graph paper? Aww. You know what? Um, did you? Did you? you did, didn't you? I I I am. Um, sorry, this is not really answering your question. It's just I also remembered something else. So like, I just really annoyed me because I just didn't get it. The whole like. Road versus road. Like <laughs> That's like the animals versus the animals. And yes. Um, but you can't tell one from the other. Yeah, I don't. The road versus the um. <laughs> One needs to know where the road ends and the road begins. Um, all right, if I was the devil's hand, I would, first of all, figure out this, like, beaver monster thing way before, like, this, like, took a really long time. Uh, um, I would also take it upon me to befriend the bear spirit man. Um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I, I would, fo I would try to foster better relationships with the indigenous tribes. I don't know. I'd be, like, a peacemaker. Me too. That, that would have been like, bear no spirit man, be beaver monsters, indigenous people, some, some old Gabriel, like... <laughs> I don't know. Peace. I would have gone and found myself an Indian boyfriend. That's the first thing I would have done. Kokulam, <laughs> where you at? Kokulam? Where you at, boy? Hey. <laughs> no, and I would have I would have definitely tried to experiment more. And I think at the point where they meet Fair and Easterly, I would have I would have gra I would have gravitated more to him because he had more of a even though they treated his magic like less legit magic, he was the only one showing like any substantial magic, mm -hmm. you know. And I would have been like, "Teach me, teach it me was, your ways." You know? He was challenging <laughs> her. He'd be like, "Don't be afraid. You gotta do your shit. You're the devil's left hand. Try doing something." I think, I think like she was more focused on. I mean, granted, fine. Like you need to stop this thing that's like killing towns or whatever. Um, but also, like, someone needs to look into what these little, like, priest, friar, whatever people are doing. Because, like, I don't know if you got to that part, Tashai, but, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that they, like, created the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's just summon these things. It's... You yeah, never read like, from the book. They, you never read from the book. If they did it once, like, they can do it again. So, like, someone needs to look into that. Also, we're all Puerto Rican. We were all colonized by the Spanish. Yeah, and I had Later. absolutely no pity for them getting slaughtered. I was like, when they showed up, I was like, when the cross up, I was like, of course it was the fucking church making bullshit happen. And then I, when they were like, oh, we want to try this, we want to die, I'm like, let them, let them get killed, who the fuck cares? I was like, I didn't care. I didn't care about them at all. I was like, it'll kiss my thing. It was their problem. Once they're dead, then we can really handle it. I mean, that's, that's me. What? Of yeah, course. Exactly. <laughs> he, he was like, uh, let them try. It's no, it's not our Arnos if they die. Mm. <laughs> and he was not, like Gabriel was really hostile to the to the to the friars, and I wondered because his name is Gabriel, so I thought of like the angel, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I wondered, you know, because there's the angel and then there's the devil, and I'm like, it was like I mean, they never really explain like you know this whole like background very well, so. Maybe in book two you will find out that, like... And then I'll just tell you about it. <laughs> yeah. I will probably read it. I mean, I like, this, I like the setting. and Yeah, you read it. You tell me about it. That sounds like a good plan. All right. I, I don't know. I would have gathered a tribe of bandits. I would have been like, yeah, I'm going to find some magicians oh, and some gang. magic, and I would have started a gang. Gang. With Co After meeting Coco, he's coming with us. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like... <laughs> Guys, we need to figure out how we're going to survive this storm that's happening. Oh, what's that in the distance? Someone has a fire going. That's amazing. Let's go try to figure out. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to each other's hair. I wanted to 
to read you guys something from an uh, interview that the author gave. Um, it's just five very brief questions. And number four is about Gabriel and, and Izzy and their relationship. So it says, I really enjoyed the relationship between her and Gabriel, her as an Isabel. Because of her youth, I was glad this didn't turn into a romantic story at this point. Is that something we may see develop in the future as Izzy ages, which is what I thought was going to happen, which I think Andrea thought was going to happen. And then the, the author's like, no. The relationship <laughs> between Isabel and Gabriel, no, it's like dot, 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 no. And then like the no is like a lowercase no. It's like very like nasty. No. no. The relationship between Isabel and Gabriel is very much that of student and mentor, and eventually friends and partners. And it's certainly loving, but not in a romant in a way that is romantic or sexual. They simply don't think of each other like that. Plus, Gabriel is very much aware of the fact that he she is much younger than him, both in years and experience, and that his obligations are protective. I suspect he would consider any physical aspect of that to be predation. I'm not going to say there aren't physical relationships ahead for them, but not with each other. I'm going to read this next book. Ooh. I need to know. Christina, you always do this. You get excited by what someone else says, and now it's going to be the next book. And like, <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, hey, birth mom. How are you doing? And you're going to be like, no. Whatever, whatever, I'll learn. See, I'm not afraid of taking risks, okay? I should have been the devil's left hand. It should have been me. <laughs> and then I would have, like, stepped out and gotten killed, like, instantly. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, of course, I know everything about a crossroads, you fucking idiot. <laughs> really? Because you're standing on one what? Damn it. <laughs> oh, I wanted to... Okay, do, do you guys have any favorite western films or shows or books that you want to recommend like if someone was really interested in reading a western romance what would you point them to these are the things you should tell us beforehand so we can actually think about them <laughs> oh well sorry i wrote my list do you want to hear it well, <laughs> I don't I don't really have a list, so I'm just gonna recommend one that we already read for Vaginal Fantasy, Silver Spoon. That's is that the name of the book? That's what I always like. Yeah, yeah. Silver Silver Lining. Oh, that's what it is. But it has a spoon on the cover, so it has a spoon and a marble and it's fucking adorable. That book is yeah, really cute. It's adorable. It's adorable. So anyway, that and, and if I'm gonna go with like a, a movie that like always makes me fucking cry so much. The horse whisperer. <laughs> I don't know if you can qualify that as a <laughs> but, but come on, guys. Like, that movie's really intense, and it's in the West, and there's horses, and it's like a tragic romance. I don't actually remember The Horse Whisperer. Oh, my God, I do, and it's so... Much, I know that it's so... This, a this is the one-sentence summary, okay? Girl gets into tragic accident riding horses, is traumatized forever, mom and dad are falling apart, go see the horse whisper, horse whisper helps girl, get over trauma, get back to riding, also trains wonderful horses, also falls hopelessly in love with, like, the, the mom, they have this, like, amazing, like, romance, and you're like, oh my god, and then she fucking leaves with her kid, to yeah. go back to her husband. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, wow, that's funny. But it's like, but it's like three hours of this. It's a very long movie. So by the end, you're just like, no, as he's like galloping the horse like across a cliff and like looking at her driving away in the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, maybe I should watch it. <laughs> I, I watch it. I can't believe you have it. You probably watched it and have forgotten it. What was that? I told, it was a long time ago. It's uh, with what's the name of this guy? Didn't we have this conversation recently? <gasps> oh no! Oh no! Is is the is I know I think I know who you're talking about the Robert Redford. Oh Robert. Okay, no, guys, I thought you were talking about somebody else. Robert Redford's in that movie, but Harry Connick Jr. isn't in that movie, right? No, fuck Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> Let me see. I'm pulling up the IMDb. Yeah, yeah. Swear. Uh, no, it is. Robert Redford as the horse whisperer. Sam Neill is the husband that she like goes back to. Sam Neill. Garlett Johansson. Garlett Johansson. She's Wait, a little girl. She's a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I think that's the first movie she did. It might what be. What about you, Sky? Do you have any like recommendations or whatever, or like favorite Western books or favorite Western movies or stories or whatever? 
I don't know if it's technically a Western. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman! Oh, that totally is! That fits! Wait, Dr. What, Quinn. Is it? what is it? Oh, that's a good one. Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman! Is that Karen, a... everyone to the diphtheria! Is that a movie or a book? It's a it's theory. A theory. Oh. With, um, what's her face? Super beautiful. Um, I always she was, was she Australian? Seagull? Seeger? Jane, Jane Seymour? Jane Seeger. Jane... God, I haven't seen that show in forever. I used to watch it on, in Spanish when they gave it in, like, 11. Uh, hold on. Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a photo of her as Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. Woof. Ouch. She can get it. <laughs> Calm down, Shay. Calm down. I'm sorry. But look at this woman. Come on. Yeah, I mean, can you picture? Can you picture the woman who's the cow girl who's like experienced, but like I picture her? Seymour, yeah, I could picture her. Did we talk about our casting? Who we cast? Um, I think you kind of mentioned for Gabriel, but not for anybody else. So okay, Gabriel and Isabel oh. are oh Haley my god, Stafford right. and Jeff Bridges, and then okay, but the devil, I imagine, as Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> so like. This is the cast of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. That can totally be maybe like a younger Gabriel. Maybe, sure. Banging the cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it. I ship it. Why not? Yeah. He, looks, he looks too pretty, though. Oof, but Andrea. Yeah. Andrea. So like a younger, okay. like when they met earlier on the road, you know? Wait, I need to click on your window so I can see. No, he's too pretty. Intensity. Sorry, I don't... I don't. When we first met. That's why exactly. it was so awkward. Exactly. It was one of those him. things where you hook up with someone at a party and then you bump into them later and it's like, oh. No, they bumped into each other on the road. So exactly. Share my and they were like, oh. Care to share your fat friend? <sighs> I, I got some powder soap that you can use <laughs> on your balls after. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> I apologize. Good God. Okay. Um, okay, so um, my recommendation was also, because I haven't read a, a ton of it. I just, like, I really I enjoyed a lot of movies. Okay, so my favorite Western movie, don't laugh, is uh, Tombstone uh, with all the, like, that, with the, um, Kurt Russell and um, that guy with the really bushy mustache and Val Kilmer. Pete it's, like, Pete? three hours long. No clue. You, down. Is it like a bunch of young cowboy cowboys? Yeah, cowboys? and they're brothers, and then you know, one of them was a sheriff. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen that. I came out on TNT, and uh, my most favorite romance of all that's western themed is Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> it's just, it's just really tragic, but I've Brokeback never, Mountain with cowboys. I've, oh, I've never read it or, or seen the movie. Andrea, I know I should get on that. I'm gonna, you know what? Um, I'm not, like, very disappointed, but, you know, because I'm aware, but, like, you need to get on that. Wait, which one is better, though? The Well, because I know it's not an actual novel, right? It's a short story that they yeah, tell. it's a short to... story. Uh, watch Brokeback Mountain. It's very tragic. I mean, uh, Tombstone is the kind of movie I like, a lot of action, and so it's not bad. It's just if you're not into action movies yeah. and you're not into westerns, I'd then that's it. Be, I'd probably be a lot more into... Um, yeah, and Brokeback Mountain isn't a western, but there are cowboys. So, isn't and it's also, almost like a pivotal uh, movement in pop culture. Like, yeah, you isn't gotta get there on. also uh, the assassination of Jesse James by that no good something or other? Yeah, that coward. Fuck by face. that coward. Face yeah. <laughs> God, that mo that name is long. But I started watching that movie at some point, and I don't know if I rem remember finishing it. But that was good. That was good. Good. All right, and we if you want to. If you want to read, if you want to read a western and like a legitimate weird western, I would I would um, suggest this book called Vermilion. It's by Molly Tanzer, and it's the the main character is a psychopath, or she's like a ghostbuster. She's like a cowboy ghostbuster, but she's also Asian. She lives in Chinatown with her mom, <laughs> and a bunch of people from Chinatown disappear, and she's got to find them. And there's there is romance in it. There's gay romance and unrequited love and like. Weird gender shit happening. It's a really weird book, but I I loved it. And uh, I also got this book 
at the bookstore like a few months a few months ago, and I read it pretty quickly. I didn't even put it on it, and it's called Vengeance Road, and it's by Aaron Bauman. And if you're looking for a, a main character that doesn't give a, fl- and she's young, but she doesn't give a flying fuck, and she's like, I'm gonna go kill for revenge. This is the book you want. This oh, is like okay. the yeah, right of 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 everything I read in Silver on the Road. Totally different books, because Silver on the Road wasn't a revenge story, but this book has plenty of meandering and action, and, like, you know, the main character. Wait, what's the name of it again? I'm going to add it to my Amazon. Vengeance Road. Vengeance Road. And I would recommend it to, like, anybody who's, like, into, into westerns. And I didn't bring it over here, but if you want to, if you like uh, weird western graphic novels, uh, I read one called Pretty Deadly. And uh, that was super weird, but it's beautiful. The story's great. Uh, those are my recommendations. And also, True Grit, the movie or the book, because I read the book when I was younger, and both of them are fucking amazing. It's my list. So if you want to like jump, get over this silver, silver on the road slump, you know, and get a, and get other things that are related, and you want to go western, and any of those things, like I would, that was, that's what I would recommend to you. Okay. Hmm. Oh, oh and uh, wait, hold on. Um, my friend Jen just turned me on to the Dark Tower series. It's gonna be. Oh, I read to, those. You read those? I actually read all of them, but I kind of had forgotten about them until like right this second. What? Yeah, my my um my boyfriend the in high school. Show. No, my my boyfriend in high school was really into Stephen King. Um, he had like all the books and um. Yeah, he just started lending me the whole series, and it was kind of annoying because he was one of those people where it's like, you can't crack the spine, and you can't bend the pages. So I had to, like, like if this was the book, I had to read it like like this, so I wouldn't, like... <laughs> but anyway, I read I read all of them, and I, I don't... I, I don't remember, like, the plot details almost at all. Like, I only have a very vague memory of it because I read them all when I was, like, 16. <laughs> so that was like 12 years ago, but yeah, I read them. I'm on the third one, and uh, I didn't care much for the first one, because, I mean, not a lot of people care for the first one. It was like an exercise in style for him. The mm-hmm. second one was really good. It got really freaking weird and really good. And the third one, the um, I read the premise, and it was good. I, I got him at the library. So I would also recommend The Dark Tower. Also, they're making, I think, a movie or a show, and it I, Idris Elba is the gunslinger. I think oh, and Matthew good. McConaughey is the the man in black, so I would just watch it for that. But I'm gonna read yeah. them too. I catch up with my friend, but also that would be if you're looking for just kind of like a gunslinging weird western. Also, that would be cool. Cool. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So that's it for me. Anything else you guys wanted to say? Mm-mm. Nothing other than this lighting makes it look like I should be filming a music video. Yeah. yeah, I've told you that before. Like, <laughs> it's just really cool lighting for sure. <laughs> it is. Take advantage of it. Fancy little light like bulb. The boy is mine. Hello, <laughs> devil. <laughs> because that's the first time that came to my mind. You weirdo! Wow. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Silver on the road. So so. I can't wait start. to get back to romance. I just want to read some trashy. When are they? When are they letting us know what the next book is? Um, the hangout for them is tomorrow, so I, I'm assuming, and it's Bonnie's pick, and so it's gonna be it's gonna be really weird. I hope. Yay! And and the and the poll there's a poll on Goodreads for the alternate book, and the alternate book could be really really weird too, like that book about the lady having sex with a bear. If that one wins, then I don't know. What? Yeah, like, <laughs> Wait, like a real bear or like when the guys no, like, like a have... real bear, like a real bear, but not in a not in a taken by the T Rex kind of way. In a she legit in falls in love with his bear. Yeah, that's kind of like this play I saw once by this guy named Ad- Edward Alby, and it was like um, the the goat or who is Sylvia or some something like that. And it's literally about a man who just falls in love with a goat and, like, wants to divorce his family and all these things. And it's, like, a really weird, like, one-act play that they do in these, like, box, black box theaters. And I remember reading an interview with, with the guy afterwards where, like, all these reporters kept asking, like, 
like, what does the goat stand for? Like, what's the metaphor? Blah, blah, blah. And the guy was like, guys, there's no fucking metaphor. Like, the dude just falls in love with a goat. That's it. Uh, <laughs> and everyone was like, what? <laughs> but, ah, all right. I fell in love with a goat. I fell in love once and a half. Okay, it's time to go. With <laughs> All right, know, everybody. Here and we'll see you next month with whatever it is that we're reading. Thanks for sticking with us so far, if you have so. Bye. Bye.